Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 12 tháng 4, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, tại sao chính quyền Johnson không được tin tưởng như chính quyền Kennedy? Tại sao chỉ trong một thời gian ngắn ngủi, chính quyền Johnson lại đánh mất những uy tín chính quyền Kennedy đã tạo dựng? Tại sao giới truyền thông lại nghi ngờ chính quyền Johnson và dần dần đứng vào thế gần như đối nghịch? Giữa khi giới truyền thông đang bước vào thế đối lập với chính quyền và sau cú dáng Tết Mậu Thân của Bắc Việt, chàng thanh niên trẻ Lacey Rice được chỉ định công tác ở Việt Nam. Minh Thúy mời quý vị tiếp tục theo dõi những biến động ở Hoa Kỳ vào cuối thập niên 60, cùng tiếp tục theo dõi những suy nghĩ, giải thích của ông Lacey Rice trong những bối cảnh của thập niên đó và cảm tưởng của ông trước khi được chỉ định công tác ở Việt Nam. Trong phần 3, do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. What do you think is the main cause of the changing of view going from Canada, uh, Kennedy administration into Johnson's administration that people have a lot of hope and believe in going out and service and everything and all of a sudden they are against the government? So what, what, what makes the attitude switching around from one position to the opposite position in such a short time in, between the two administrations? I believe it was probably because our government uh, in, in principally, principally with regard to Vietnam, the Vietnam War, uh, was caught uh, not uh, always telling the truth uh, in our zeal to uh, win the war. Uh, I'm afraid we were, our, our government was uh, tempted and often gave in to the temptation to paint things much, much uh, more optimistically than they were. And of course, all that exploded uh, at the time of the Tet Offensive, which is really uh, terribly uh, ironic because by all accounts, the South Vietnamese won the Tet Offensive. And yet, in the United States, uh, our government's credibility was, was badly uh, damaged. And I, and I don't think we... Uh, uh, during the during the war the government never recovered from mm -hmm. that there seems to be a struggle between the uh, uh, so-called journalists and the administration the administration's accusing that the journalists are not re, uh, reporting the truth whereas the journalists are saying that all the information coming from administration is not true struggle kept going on uh, would you say it's part of the media that uh, created the loss of faith in the american people about the war and about Vietnam War, specifically? Uh, well, they certainly had a role. Uh, don't forget that, uh, not all by any means, but a large number of journalists and, and the most famous journalists uh, were against the war. Who are they right? Pardon me? Who are they right? Well, I guess it depends on, on what uh, kind of, what subject you're talking about. They were, of course, against the dissembling that, the, that our government often did uh, in its public statements about the war, and you can't uh, blame them for that. Uh, but I think also they uh, took on the view, many of them took on the view, that the communists uh, were the better party the communists uh, uh, were, uh, were stronger and would win anyway. The South Vietnamese were uh, often corrupt uh, and had, a, uh, in, in, the, in the view of some people, a tenuous claim on, uh, on the leadership of South Vietnam and all that. And I think those kinds of, and, and don't forget there were some very influential books at the time that espoused this view. Fire in the Lake is uh, maybe the most prominent yes. of them. Yes. And that, uh, that uh, impacted a lot of people. 
but they find the leg came out in 1972, not 1968, 1962, or 1965, when American involvement is already there. So you're talking about 1972 as well. Well, that, that, that's true, but it, it encapsulated the view that was uh, growing among the press and other people mm -hmm. about that time, I would say. Uh, what about you? Uh, what's your impression about uh, <clears throat> you know, the time that the American came into the war? Were you holding the popular view or do you have any personal view at that time? Well, I think I was holding, uh, 1965 you say? Yes. Popular view, I okay. would say. Uh, and what year did you come to Vietnam? Uh, I came first, I was there twice. Mm. I came first in uh, the uh, uh, May of 1969. 69. That's the first time you yeah. been in Vietnam. So that's already after Tet. Yeah, that, that was about a year after Tet. Mm -hmm. What is your impression when you got into the country? Well, the first, <laughs> you know, uh, when we were being prepared to go to Vietnam. Uh, How are you prepared? First of all, uh, I entered the Foreign Service in January of 1968. So for the first uh, four months, I was in a uh, orientation course for the Foreign Service. Then uh, I was assigned to Vietnam. Then I went into the Vietnam Training Center uh, for training to go to Vietnam, most of which was language training. And uh, then I finally went to Vietnam in, uh, as I said, in April or May of 1969. 69, how do you find the country? How does it feel to you? How, how, what's your expectation before coming to Vietnam? Any ex specific expectation coming to the country and what kind of job would you do? Uh, how well, you can well I'll, I'll, I, I'm uh, sorry to say that my first uh, uh, concern uh, about arriving in Vietnam was that I not be killed. And uh, it, 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 it took uh, a few weeks for me to look around and realize that that was uh, not very likely. <laughs> <laughs> not likely at all. But when you're uh, looking at things from afar, uh, naturally, uh, all of us who were assigned to Vietnam, who had been assigned to Vietnam, we all had to have that in mind. Uh, I don't want to get killed in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were getting killed in Vietnam, Americans. Yes. Uh, but uh, I quickly saw that the kind of work, the kind of places that we were in, and the kind of work that we were doing, uh, did not was were, were were not likely to result in our deaths. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we were right. In fact, uh, uh, the 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 people who uh, went to Vietnam. Most were like me. They went through their whole time there and nothing uh, damaging ever happened to them. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, a lot of foreign service officers were killed in Vietnam, mostly, at, I, I think, uh, around the Tet Offensive because they all of a sudden found themselves in the midst of a shooting war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, for most of us, that did not happen. And, and, and by the way, this, I think uh, it's interesting to note this. Even though the, 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 the Foreign Service officers and other civilians participated in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, very, very few got killed or injured. Many more in Vietnam. And I think that is because in, in Vietnam, uh, we were really, uh, as civilians, we were really allowed uh, to be on our own. Mm. Uh, you, uh, of course, were expected to display some common sense, uh, not go into places uh, where there was, uh, where they were dangerous, mm -hmm. and you quickly learned Mm -hmm. in the Mekong Delta, for example, where mm -hmm. those places were and, and mm -hmm. where they weren't. And so you sort of self-regulated. Mm -hmm. In When you got to Afghanistan, though, and, uh, and Iraq, there was a whole different security atmosphere mm -hmm. and a whole new concern 
for the security of our diplomats mm -hmm. abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, the good news from that is that very few were killed, almost none. Mm -hmm. The bad news is that they were very much discouraged from going out in the field mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and doing reporting of the kind that we did in mm -hmm. Vietnam. Kính mời quý vị đón xem phần 4 phỏng vấn với ông Lacey Rice, nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ, sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ Sáu, ngày 19 tháng 4, 2024.